All right. So, hey, guys. So we have started a new summer series called Life Lessons, and where we are just looking at uh, biblical characters and looking at their life and kind of dissecting it, seeing the good, bad, and ugly. I just and love just that applying when it we us. titled this series, unintentionally, it came from the dadness in us. Yeah. So like, life lessons. Some That's li- what yeah. the kids need. When we were talking, we were like, there's some life lessons here, you know, and then we named it that, which... It's true. There's a lot of life lessons you can learn from these people. <laughs> but really, kids, there is a lot of life lessons. Yeah. <laughs> All joking aside. But also, it has that double, it's a double-edged sword because there are life lessons, singular or plural, sorry. But then we are looking at the lives, yeah, and, like the, the story yeah. arc as a whole of but, different people. If you caught us last week, we looked at Joseph. Yeah. He went from prisoner to baller. Yeah, yeah, we talked about like how he that. Went but from, today we're looking at Peter. Yeah, the Apostle the Rock. Peter. Yeah, the Apostle Peter. Two people to be called the Rock. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah. And Simon the Rock Peter. Yeah. Peter. Simon Peter. The I will Rock. think about that for the rest of my life now. The fact that you just, I just made that. I never would have well, thought here, about that. Here's the deal is like like people call Dwayne Johnson the Rock. Like, yeah. is that, that's silly. It's silly. If you think about it, it's silly. This is straight up silly. It's yeah. like, he probably signs checks. Yeah. He probably signs. He doesn't sign His checks. mortgage for a house. He doesn't pay him As, he definitely buys his cars in cash. In cash, 100%. But he's like, the rock. Like, that's probably on his bank account. Yeah. Which actually makes him seem what like the worst. What would you be if you just had a singular name? Humble. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about Peter the Rock. Yeah, so the Rock, the Apostle so Peter. Peter, the disciple Which, I, Peter. I think Peter gets a lot of hate sometimes. Yeah, you know, people always point to Peter's like flaws. Well, he sticks his foot in, in his, his mouth, mouth a lot. All the time, which I think... Not which literally. We'll, we'll talk about that, but we can all relate. Where Peter does one thing good and then immediately turns around and does something, and you're like, I'm Peter. Well, and he's super kind of aggressive and passionate. He is. He's very uh, passionate. Which they is call him... Him and his brother, the Sons of Thunder. Yeah. Which, by the way, Super in cool. college, uh, me and a group of guys, we got bikes, not like Harleys, but yeah. like bike pedal bikes. Sure, of and course. And we would ride around, and when we rode around, we called ourselves the, th- the Sons of Thunder. Good for you. We'd go on Sons of Thunder rides. That's amazing. Around Clinton. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, I feel like that's one thing about me is I take something normal, and I have to, I make it a thing. Sure. Right. Wow. I could go on about that. <laughs> I'm not going to. I have that? a lot of questions about that. All right. So looking at Peter. Uh, so the main thought we're looking at with Peter, ultimately, we're going to get to is just commitment. Uh, so we're looking at Peter. We're going to be talking about commitment a lot. So we want to yep. look at Peter's life, which is what we're doing with everybody. We want to look at their life as a whole, good, bad, and ugly, and kind of dissect it and then show how it points to Christ and all that. So Every time you say yeah. good, bad, and ugly, yeah, I think the about movie, the movie. The Western. It's like, it's like a dub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have an awful bow, dub sound. Bow. And the thing rolls across. It's so iconic. Is that Clint Eastwood? Mm-hmm. Anyway. All right, so we're looking at Peter talking about commitment. So we look, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to be jumping a lot through the Gospels. So just kind of hang out with us. You ain't got to turn everywhere, yeah. but you just be looking. So in Matthew. So Peter is a disciple. Yes. He's an apostle, which that means basically a disciple. But after, he's one of the first church leaders after Jesus has yeah. gone to Peter's be super father. important uh, when it comes to and the I church and everything. And I think a fun fact yeah, fun little fact. Yeah, tell just them. to get us going. That you is may that, not know that Peter was married. Yeah, so Peter was he had married. a wife. Mm-hmm. He had a home, a family. Yeah, yeah. And he he did all this of whereas Paul was single. Yeah, I think most people know that. Well, Peter, I don't know if people really knew that he was married. Which is Peter a had himself a boo. He did. Peter was married. So yeah, boo. So we want to look at the life of Peter. So let's look at. We'll start in Matthew four. Matthew four eighteen just talks about where Jesus. It says, one day Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water for they fished for a living. So we see real quick on Peter, what's he do for a living? He's a fisherman. And if you know anything about the history of that time, it meant you were pretty much a nobody. You just you were a fisherman. You weren't important. You didn't have to have a uh, you know Degree. training, no, yeah. knowledge base, fisherman. go to school, no nothing. Yeah, you were pretty much a nobody. A wor- yeah. uh, and I mean, um, yeah, go ahead. Just nothing. I was gonna say a physical worker, but that's yeah. wrong. A a uh, manual labor. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I was You thinking. were just working. Man, you manual worked. labor. And not only that, you stunk. You smell like fish. And you, I mean, literally God. nobody. And so, I which I think it's cool. We see Jesus calling people that are quote unquote nobodies, and which is cool. So then we see in in Matthew four, or yeah, Matthew four, he he sees them throwing a net into the water, and then Jesus says, verse nineteen, he says to them, "Come and follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people." It says they left their nets at once and they followed him, which I think is such a cool thing. They're like, you know, who is this guy? Let's fo- let's let's follow him, and yeah. then we'll kind of walk into all these things. So now we want to look at. I mean, what did Peter see? He, so yeah. he follows Jesus. Well, and, what happens? And after we know that? that he is one of the core yeah. three. Like Jesus has yeah. uh, the people that there are times when some of the other disciples weren't with him, but these guys were there. He was a part yeah. of the core. Yeah, yeah. Jesus kind of gives us a model of discipleship. He's got twelve, then he's got three, then he has one, and so uh, he's got the twelve, then he's got the three: Peter, James, and John. And we'll walk into that in a second, but. Let's just kind of look at what Peter saw, because we want to walk through all of it with Peter. So just a couple things. So we were seeing Matthew 8. Uh, I really, this, none of this is really, I say, in order, but we're just kind of looking at some things that, that happened and just kind of look at it from Peter's perspective. So it says in Matthew 8, 14, just talks about that uh, basically uh, his mother-in-law sick yeah. and uh, with a high fever, which I assume means she's going to die. You know, they didn't have medicine like we have now. and. It says Jesus arrives at Peter's house, <clears throat> and his, his mother-in-law is very sick in bed with a high fever. Jesus touched her, uh, and the fever left her, and she got up and prepared a meal for them. So just real you quick. You know that meal was fire. Oh, yeah. You're back, you know? you're back to full health. You know, it's probably Grandma's incredible. cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, I'm more alive than ever. <laughs> Here's some cornbread. Yeah, probably. That's probably not how it happened, but sure. you know that was good. That's funny. Um, so there's the thing Peter sees there. He sees his literally his mother in law pretty much get her life back. And, you know, so he heals his mother in law. So that's one of the first thing Peter sees. But then immediately verse sixteen says they see all these demon possessed people come and cast evil spirits out and, and with a single command. Yeah, yeah. So they he all of a sudden Peter goes from just a fisherman to whoa, you just healed her of her sickness that was gonna kill her and whoa, you know you're healing all these people and, and casting out evil spirits from people. And he realizes real quick, like, this isn't just a guy. This is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, Matthew 14, one of the biggest, I think, stories when people think about Peter is uh, Jesus walks on the water. You know, he's walking towards them. Matthew 14, uh, verse 28, what does it say? It says, he says, don't be afraid. He's walk- so Jesus is walking on water. He says, take courage. I'm here. It says, 28, says, Peter calls to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell you to come to me walking on the water. Uh, which I think there's Peter's passion coming out a little bit, like if it's really you, you know, which by the way, well, first of all, think about what you're seeing. Like you see yeah. a guy walk on water. He's like, well, if you're for really Jesus, prove it. You know, I would be just freaked out, but Peter's like, well, prove it. Cause you know, say come. And Jesus is like, okay, then, then come. It says Peter goes to the side of the boat and walks on the water towards Jesus. I mean, so just imagine that. What a which crazy is moment. amazing. Yes. I think that that's a moment though. Where he gets a bad rap, but like, I don't see any other disciples yeah. stepping out yeah. on faith, oh, walking oh, on water. Which, by the way, I just have a feeling a lot of them couldn't swim. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably right. I'd be terrified in those yeah. wooden. And boats. Here's the, he may not could either, and which may just show you know how he's, why he it's was really so terrified. Sure. Well, then it says that's kind of where he gets the bad rap because he took you know quote unquote, he took his eyes off the Lord. He starts looking at the waves and everything, and gets terrified, and he starts sinking. He starts he shouts, you know. Uh, Help me, you know. Uh, so he gets the bad rap, but I think to his credit, like he's like, all right, if you're Jesus, then tell me to tell me to walk on the water and it'll work. And it just shows you, like I know you obviously are more than just some random guy. So mm-hmm. if you're who you say you are, tell me. Which I just think shows Peter's faith and and all that. And there's the the passage in Luke five where he's uh, he's fishing and he's not catching any fish, and Jesus is like go further out, and he goes further out throws his net in, and then he can't even bring in the net of fish because there's so many, right? So he's seeing these moments of, uh, he's just seeing some pretty big moments, which, mm-hmm. you know, real quick tag, John says in the Gospel of John, he's like, there's so many things that Jesus did that we can't even, it would may take, you know, forever or to fill the whole earth with how much we would have to write. So yeah. we, we didn't even see everything Jesus did, but think about all the things he did see. So in Luke 8, again, yeah, we're just verse, going to, Verse 50 this is a moment that Peter witnesses, yeah, okay. uh, and it says, But when Jesus heard what had happened, he said to Jairus, 
don't be afraid. Just have faith, and she will be healed. This is talking about a girl that had died. And it says, when they arrived at the house, Jesus would not let anyone go in with him except Peter, James, John, that's that core three, yep. and the little girl's father and mother. The house was filled with people weeping and wailing, but he said, stop the weeping. She is not dead. She is only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him because they all knew what that knew she had died. Then Jesus took her by the hand and said with a loud voice, My child, get up. And at that moment, her life returned, and she immediately stood up. And then Jesus told them, Give her something to eat. And her parents were overwhelmed. But Jesus insisted that they not tell anyone what had happened. Yeah, so Peter... Again, sees this huge moment. It, she's dead. Like he he is seeing just insane things. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's always good. It's to, numb to us. Yes. Well, because you just read it so quick, you're like, oh, she was We've dead. heard it our yeah, whole lives. Yeah. yeah. I think it's good. Even to sl- just like the walking on the water thing. Yeah, I All agree, right. man. You know, I grew up in church, so like I saw the pictures on the wall when I was a little kid. Mm-hmm. You know. Sometimes you, you read it and hear it so much, it's not real. But I just got to, you got to stop and think, he walked on the water, man. Yeah. Like, what a crazy thing. And then to see this, you walk in, she's dead. And then the, Jesus says, she's not dead, she's asleep. Which, go, Jesus, because he knows, he's like, she's not really, like, I'm about to bring her back. Yeah. And so Peter sees this. So he's seen a lot of things. A huge thing that Peter then witnesses in, in Matthew 17, we call it the transfiguration. So this is a moment, again, Verse 1 says, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John. Again, he's with the 12, but he takes the three. He goes up to a high mountain and says, Then they all of a sudden they see Jesus. He's transformed. His face shone like the sun. His clothes became as white as light. And then Moses and Elijah appear. So pretty much Jesus in his glory. They see they don't see just the man Jesus. They see the godness of him, right? Mm-hmm. And then Moses and Elijah appears. And I think the crazy thing is, which I think just kind of gives us a glimpse of heaven, they recognize him, Right. I think that's Moses and Elijah. Let's just pause real quick. They've never, they didn't have pictures. You know what I mean? There's a huge time gap between these people and they know who they are. I know it's just random. Yeah. I just think it just That'd shows. That'd be you, something to ask when yeah. you get to heaven. I like, think it just shows. Why, how did you know? I think it just shows the Lord and that you just, they just knew. You know, his goodness. And anyway, I just think it's a cool moment and it gives a cool, small glimpse of heaven. And anyway, it says. What are you going to ask him when you get to heaven? To heaven? Oh, man. Jokingly, I'm always like, "Why do you? Why does math exist?" I never liked it growing up, uh, but I don't. I, don't know. I would probably ask something like, "You know, we could domesticate dogs." Yeah, and I love my dog, but how awesome would it have been to domesticate a raptor? Why couldn't you have let dinosaurs live? Yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know. I, so and then in the serious maybe vein, there will be a raptor when all things are made new. That's right, man. Why not? Why not? Yeah. I love you so much. So, uh, so it says they they see Moses and Elijah, and then Peter exclaims, "It's wonderful for us to be here." And anyway, so they see the transfiguration. So now Peter sees mm-hmm. this, and there's a couple other things we want to hit quickly. So then there's the kind of the big moment in Peter's life, Matthew 16, where uh, I think Peter kind of gets known for uh, Matthew 16, verse 13. Uh, Jesus asks all his, his disciples, he's like, who, who do people say that I am? And they all have these responses. Uh, and then he's like, okay. And I think another thing that's cool is in that area, Caesarea Philippi, um, you know, they, they believe that that was an area with a lot of idols and areas for different gods. Yeah. So like it said that in that conversation, they could be like, you know, people say that this is that, this is that. What do, what do you say about me? Sure. That's cool, yeah. Cool yeah. thing to know. And they're like, you know, they say all these things. You're a prophet. You're just another guy. But then Jesus says, who do you say? And then, mm-hmm. then this is the, the big moments. Peter says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And then immediately Jesus turns and is like, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. And then he goes on to say, you are Peter, which means rock upon this rock. I will build my church and the powers of hell will not conquer it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. Whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. I mean, so imagine that. All of a sudden, like, Peter's like, you're Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus is like, that's right. And your name is Peter, which means rock. And I'm going to build my church on you, gates of hell. You know, and all of a sudden Peter's like, you know, yeah, I am. 
You know, the rock, the rock. He's like, yeah, he's I am. The, how many he else? Is the original rock. How, how many else you guys just got? Here? How many Fast and Furious movies yeah, am I gonna that's be? That's right. In, Jesus. I, he's like, come on. And so, uh, it's a big moment. But then here's it's the part. False. Here's the part where Peter gets known for. I think even more than that. So it shows Jesus his passion. And then uh, we go on to see. Uh, in, well, in verse 21, Jesus, it says, From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priest, and the, le- uh, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, and on the third day he would be raised from the dead. And then this is what we're talking about. It says, But Peter took Jesus aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Yeah. So literally you see this moment where he's like, Peter, you're the you're this church. And then just imagine this moment. Peter's getting on to Jesus, right? He's like, Jesus, don't say that. How could you and You're then not G- gonna be killed. That's don't right. Don't say that. But Jesus is, rep the yeah. word there reprimand. reprimands him. Yeah. Like getting on to him. I mean pretty bold, Peter. What the how what he was saying like pretty in bold. faith just be like you're not gonna die you know like no I think it's how he was sure like, it's like getting on thought, to him I'm somebody now yeah you called me the rock like I'm building my church me so like, hey, hey, hey Jesus hey look, 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 I know you do all this stuff you're wrong you know I'm a pretty bold moment of Peter yeah. uh, and then which again he gets known for that and verse twenty three verse twenty three immediately what does Jesus do he turns to Peter and so he just told him. You know, another point, you're the rock and build my church on you. And then in 23, he says to Peter, get away from me, Satan. You're a dangerous trap to me. You're seeing things merely from a human point of view and not from God's. So I just imagine the awkwardness of that situation. You know what I mean? The other dudes were there. You know what I mean? So they're like, whoa, he's getting on to Jesus. And then immediately Jesus is like, get away from me. I just like, this is awkward. Like, I don't, what does Peter go? Because you don't get the rest of the story. I bet Peter's like, no, okay. Or yeah. he went and cried. Probably so. <laughs> Probably so. He's like, I'm the worst. You know, which is a great example of Peter putting the foot in his mouth. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and there you go, Peter. Just there you go saying something that your pride got the best of you there. And yeah. And trying to rebuke Jesus. Well, and, let's look in Matthew 26. Uh, Matthew 26 is the time where um, Peter kind of tells Jesus, you know, in verse 35, he says, verse 34, it says, Jesus says, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times that you, you will deny that you even know me. Yeah. So Jesus pretty much just told them all like, here's what's about to happen and you're all going to desert me. Yeah. And then Peter's, and then. Peter says. No. No. Yeah. Peter there he goes insists, again. Even if I have to die with you, I will never n- deny you. Yeah. And then he goes on, Jesus says. And know. all the other disciples vowed the same. Yeah, man. Like following Peter, which just shows you Peter's a leader, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, yeah. Big deal to see there. Uh, they following Peter. And, and I mean, Jesus just said, all of you are going to abandon me. Mm-hmm. And Peter's like, no. And then Jesus is like, okay, well, you'll see. Uh, he said Tonight, yeah, yeah, this very night, yeah. Okay, so we want to look at Peter's passion a little bit more again. Matthew twenty six, yeah, you, verse fifty one. I think we know him what for a this, crazy yeah. thing. Jesus that, is. They come to arrest him yeah, in the garden, and when they come to arrest him, Jesus is giving himself up, and Peter pulls out his sword yeah. and strikes the high priest slave. Slashing off his ear. Yeah, so he just cut in a verse ear 51. off. He just cut dude's ear off. They just throw that in there real quick. Yeah, but that just shows Which, you his passion. By the passion. way, I think though that shows he was Peter was trying to kill that guy. Yeah, he went messing around. He was like, I think he just missed and got the ear. You're not like like if I come at you with a sword, I'm going to injure you. I'm not going to be like you yeah. know a hibachi chef and just get the <laughs> ear. <laughs> I'm not that accurate. Sure. So I think Peter was trying to kill that guy, and P- and Jesus is like, no, put away your sword. Yeah, uh, not a revolutionary. And then, yeah, then he, Jesus heals that guy, Yeah. puts the ear back on. Cool moment. And then they still, they, they arrest him. Yeah. I bet the guy that got his ear put back on felt bad. I know this is random, and obviously this is 
not in the Bible, but the Passion of the Christ has a great moment where when he heals that guy's ear, the guy just doesn't do anything else with Jesus. He just stays on his knees and just stares at him while they take Jesus away. Yeah. I like that's that. What I'm saying. That's probably if what happened. My ear got put back on and be yeah. like, I'm, uh, not, I'm yeah. not gonna arrest him. Obviously this guy's not just a regular guy. I'm yep. with you. But anyway, we don't know that happened. But just so that's Peter's like a passion. famous, yeah, that mm-hmm. shows his passion. Yeah. So then you go on in that actual narrative right there in Matthew 26. The same, this is all in same progress. Night. All same night. Yeah. Peter's sitting outside. So he, Peter is actually pretty near to where Jesus is getting questioned and accused. And they, they a servant girl comes over. We see in verse 69, she's like, you were with him. You knew him. And then it says in front of everyone, Peter denies him. He's like, I don't know what, what you're talking about. And then later by the gate. Another one sees him, and she's like, you were with well, Jesus. Denies him again. Yeah. But I, I, I do want to point out in verse 56, and I meant to say this earlier, but so he heals the guy's ear, and they, they arrest him. But then it says in verse 56, at this point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. So it's like even before that point. like They already left him. Peter deuces. He's like, out, I'm out. Gone. That's They're right. Gone. Yeah, leaves him there. But then Jesus, you know, he told him, he's like, you're going to deny me three times, mm-hmm. and which we see. And here's what's crazy, too. Just to Peter's passion, it says in verse 72, he denied that he didn't, but with an, with an oath. Like, pretty much he swore. Like, it was more than just, I don't know him. He's like, I'm, you know, which you shouldn't do. He's, he's, he's like, living in fear. Yeah, he's like, I do not life. know him. Yeah. Um, and then it goes on again. You must be one of them. We can tell by your accent. And then he swore at big time. He's a curse yeah. on me if I'm lying. I do not know the man. It says, and then immediately the rooster crows. And so suddenly Jesus' word flashed through his mind before the rooster crows, you'll deny me three times. And then it says he went away and he wept bitterly, which immediately, yeah. so I think it all hit him like a train. Like he was right. I did the, I, I, I did the one thing. I, I said, became yeah. the thing I swore to. That's destroy. right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's true. Like literally the one thing he said would never happen happened mm-hmm. he's like i'm not gonna deny you which i think but it's like it's like in all of what he said was he saw the miracles but it told us earlier that he was seeing jesus and his kingdom from a humanly point of view so when jesus said hey i'm gonna die all this is gonna happen peter just d- missed checked down on he missed how no, it, he was going to be taken and die. So when it gets to the point when Jesus is arrested, because he's seen it from that human point of view, he's now in this fear for his life because that what he put his faith in, that humanly faith, was gone. He he wasn't yeah. trusting. That's right. You know the the process, the plan. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which I think goes into why he cut the. He was going to kill the guy. Yeah. You know, he's just complete opposite of what Jesus said. Like you're trying to do this humanly and it's, it's all mm-hmm. a kingdom thing and but then there's a cool moment specifically dealing with peter in john 21 so jesus we, we know the story of the gospel he, he dies on the cross uh defeats death comes back to life and john 21 says uh, jesus appears to the disciples again by the sea of galilee this is how it happens it says several of them one of them being peter uh, it says they were fishing which i think just shows us a picture of peter like he he failed he and failed, I, he just, but then it specifically says that Simon Peter said, I'm um, going fishing. Which I think just shows you he Point threw, to, he threw in like, the towel. He's done. He's going back to his old yes. life, going back yeah, to I what failed. he found yeah. his identity I in. I failed. There's no way he could yeah. forgive me or love me. Going back to the one thing I know, you know what I mean, to a life of meaninglessness. And, and that's where he found his, like, yeah, security, his, his meaning, yes, purpose, his identity, yeah, yeah. his purpose, all yeah. of that. Which I'm gl- so thankful this chapter exists because it goes on to just show the fact that Peter says, I'm going fishing, and they're all like, yeah, we'll go too. And so they go, and they're just defeated, and they gave up, and then all of a sudden they see Jesus on the shore. And he's like, have y'all caught any fish? And he's like, no. And then he says, throw your nets on this side, and they do, and they couldn't even haul them in again. And then they're like, it's Jesus. And then immediately, I love, it says what Simon, his Peter's response, it says he put his tunic he put his, his clothes back on. Apparently, he had kind of undressed to, to get dirty and fish. So he puts his tunic back on and says he jumps in the water. So I just think about that passion. Mm. You know what I mean? He's like, I got to get to Jesus. Mm. I, I, the last time he saw me, I denied him. Like, yeah. I, and, yeah. uh, you know, we're going to talk about John at some point, but I don't know if we'll talk about this. So I just love that, like, in verse 7, it says, The disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. So John's writing this, and they're like, Hey. Let me make sure everybody knows. Yeah, we was boys. 
Yeah, it's true. Jesus um, loved me. Yeah. Uh, they were the closest of, yeah. the, of the 12. But then he's like, yeah, I got to get to him. Yeah, which is cool. Jumps she's, into the water. See his, I mean, I love that just the simplicity, and I would preach this in a sermon, like, you do everything you can to get to Jesus. Jump in water, get wet. You know what I mean? doesn't matter. Swim. And I, ma- I imagine the other guys are probably like, we're just going to row the boat back. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to take a few minutes, but we're going to just row back to the shore. And Peter's just They're probably d- They're probably thinking like, Peter, again, you're Here jumping go. Here we go. to conclusions. Yeah. You're putting your... Here we go, Peter. Putting yourself and out there. And then you see John 21. Uh, they get there. And I think it's kind of the humor here. Uh, it says they were only a few hundred yards from the shore. So they weren't far off. By the way, like, though, let's say it's a few is three, in my opinion. So that's a swim. Let's say it's 300 sure. yards. That's a swim. Yeah. I'm I'm dying if uh, I yeah. swim 300 yards. Yes. One of my questions I ask people to like conversation is like, how far could you swim before you died? Or if I'm what like standing on a lake, is like, could I make it across? Yeah. Which and here's what's true: you think you might can until you swim. You're, yeah. Man, swimming's not easy. There's a reason 300 why the Phelps yards? is crazy. Yeah, I'm out. I just anyway. I'm in the boat. So I think there's there's humor. I do find some humor in the fact that he yeah. jumps in the water, and they're probably like, "Where well, we're, we're we have a boat? We're just gonna go back." Which I just Peter's passion. He's like, "I'm getting to Christ," which is to tag that, do yeah. everything you can to get to Christ. I think there's a lot to see there. But what happens? He gets to Jesus. I love the fact that Jesus is just cooking. I just there's so much fish. beauty here. He's just cooking breakfast, man. I love that. Yeah. He's just making breakfast. Just defeated death, hell, in the grave. He's chilling, cooking breakfast. I think he's just showing like it's going to be, you know, it's going to be okay. And where did that food go? You know, because <laughs> that's his resurrected sure. body. I don't know, man. I mean, I don't know. I guess he still had, you know, a stomach. Uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, so basically... Yeah. They catch a lot of fish. And here's what's cool. It says the net doesn't tear, which is just the miracle of God. So anyway, what do you see in John 21? He restores Peter. Yeah. Uh, it literally, he says three times to John. He's like, Simon, son of... He calls... He doesn't even... He doesn't call him Peter here, right? Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Peter's like, yes, Lord, you know I do. And then Jesus says, feed my lambs. And then he asks him again, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter's response, yes, Lord, you know I do. And then Jesus says, take care of my sheep. Then a third time, Jesus says, Simon, do you love me? It says Peter was hurt. Jesus asked the question a third time. And he said, Lord, you know, you know my heart. You know everything. You know that I love you. Which I think Jesus is saying, you denied me three times. I'm going to ask three times. You know, I think, I think that's kind of bringing it back to Peter. Like, you're asking me a third time. There's a, you know, I denied you three times. I think it just shows. Yeah. I love Peter's response. He's like, I know I messed up. You, you know I love you. Well, it's like he gave him a chance to yeah. redeem himself. Yeah. Because he it, denied him three times. Now he's allowing him to. Yeah. Say it three times. Yeah. Which is cool, man, well, the way the Lord restores. In verse 18, it says, I tell you the truth, when you were young, or well, he says, then feed my sheep the yeah. third time. But then he says, I tell you the truth, when you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others, and you will dress that, uh, and they will dress you and take you where you do not want to go. Yeah. So that, he's hinting at how. He's going to die. How he would die was yeah. we we know just from church history that Peter uh, was martyred on a cross like Jesus was. Some people uh, think it was upside, upside down, down. Yeah. Uh, because he said he wasn't right. worthy to be yeah. uh, killed the same way. Yeah. But basically, he's saying there is like he was fully committed, even he's all in. unto death. That's right. He was all in. It was and just so a cool way to, to redeem himself. And Peter becomes like that cornerstone head. leader in the church in Acts. He like preaches the first sermon yeah. in Acts two. Big moment in Acts two. Um, and you know, even there's even times where we see like Peter having confrontations with Paul. They work it out like yeah. Peter is literally like he said a cornerstone of the early church. Yeah, and why you know why we're here today. Well, I think so many of us can see ourselves in Peter. You do you know you're living for the Lord and then you mess up. Yeah. Living for the Lord, then you mess up. And I think... And it, it's... Yeah. yeah wrong and coaster, it's, but. Oh, I just love... You don't really see much about Peter after the Gospels You see in Acts. So he's the leader of the church, preaches the first sermon, thousands come to Christ. Like this huge number. Peter's a big deal in the church. I mean, like, not, you know, like he's one of the main leaders, apostle. And uh, then Paul shows up in Galatians chapter 2, uh, and it says that he has to confront Peter because of the way Peter's acting around Gentiles when when... 
yeah, some of his Jewish, faced. yeah, he's being two faced, and so Paul's like, I confronted him. So and it says he confronts him in front of everybody. Yeah, I mean, so now Peter's getting scolded again. Yeah, and it's just so but, funny. But in the end, though, is like it's it's not necessarily about like Peter doing this much good or this much bad, but in the end, it was about just being devoted and his commitment. Mm-hmm. And so what Jesus says about that, Luke 9, 57 through 62, it says, But Jesus told him, Anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So the lesson there is just to, like, stay the course. Like, it doesn't matter what distraction, what failure comes, Yeah, you know. Um, let's just put it plain and simple. We're going to mess up. We're sinful. We're sinful till we mm-hmm. die. We're going to mess up. We're going to fall. Proverbs says the godly may trip and fall seven times. They'll get up again. So I think it's true of Peter. Like, you're going to mess up. We'll get up and just keep seeking the kingdom. Matthew 10, 38. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of being mine. So just being, when you follow Jesus, you know, you got to be all in. Like, have the passion that Peter had. And there's going to be moments where you fail and mess up. But seek out, go after Jesus. (laughs) Jump out of the boat. Go to Christ. And just, you know, just thinking about it, kind of talking about it out loud. It's two times where Peter just gets out of the boat and runs to Jesus. First time he, yeah, he starts sinking and he gets scared. The second time he just jumps straight in, and which I guess he can swim, by the way, because he swims to the shore. But I just think it's cool. It's two times where it happens, and one time he's scared. The second time he's like, I don't care. Like I'm yeah. getting there. So anyway, yeah. So commitment, like Peter. Yeah. Students, well, be committed to the Lord. Run after Him. You're gonna mess up. You're gonna fail. Like you, there's sin there. Yeah. But just. Know that Peter's Jesus' response to you is really the same that it was to Peter. Do you love me? Well, then follow me. Like, yeah. and yeah. we should rejoice in that, you know. And yeah. that's and that's the grace and mercy of Christ that we'll never fully understand on this side of eternity. So, yeah. so be all well, in. Great, a lot of stuff in good. Peter's life. Yeah, a lot of stuff with Peter's life. So much more we could have touched on. Yes, um, so much more. But it's been good studying Peter, the Rock. Yeah, the 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 original. Rock. That's right. So, Peter. We'll holler at you next week. See you.